Good day, everyone. You're welcome to this week's Business and Investment Tips program, a production of RCCG Christchurch Radio with Ayode Jiebel, an investment profession. This week, the focus is on the CBN's new capital requirements for banks. Last Thursday, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, announced an upward review of the minimum capital requirement for commercial, merchant, and non-interest banks in Nigeria. The Banking Sector Recapitalization Program is a regulatory initiative of the CBN that requires banks to increase their minimum paid-in common equity capital to a specified amount according to their license category within two years. Banks are also given the option to downgrade the scope of their activities in exchange for lower capital requirements. The overall aim of the recapitalization is to ensure that Nigerian banks have the capacity to take bigger risks and stay afloat in times of trouble, support different sectors of the economy, and improve confidence in the banking system. Recall that the last bank recapitalization was in 2005 when the minimum Minimum capital requirement for national commercial banks were increased from 5 billion naira to 25 billion naira, equivalent to $189 million and worth only $32.5 million today. This reduced the number of banks from 89 to 24. There have been 10 different phases of recapitalization between 1952 and 2005 in Nigeria. The new capital requirement, as stated by the CBN, is as follows 1. Commercial banks. International banks, 500 billion naira or $385 million. National banks, 200 billion naira or $153 million. And regional banks, 50 billion naira and $38 million. Two, merchant banks are now required to have 50 billion naira in minimum capital, while non interest banks are required to have 20 billion naira and 10 billion naira for national and regional banks. These are the options from which the CBN allows banks to source capital. One, in inject fresh equity capital through private placements, right issues, and or offer for subscription. 2. Mergers and acquisitions, M&As, and or 3. Upgrade or downgrade of license authorization. This implies that banks can only raise capital via equity. The debt capital option is totally excluded. The CBN emphasizes that the minimum capital shall comprise paid up capital, the portion of its share investors have paid for, and share premium, the amount of money the bank receives for its shares over and above its par value only. This implies that retained earnings and reserves are excluded for the purpose of this exercise. The CBN's focus is to bring fresh long-term capital into the banks. Also, addition, tier 1, 81 banks is a form of capital instrument banks utilize to augment their core equity base. This can be perpetual debt instruments or convertible. The table put together by Naira Metrics shows the current paid up share capital and share premium for each bank and the required capital to meet the CBN's requirement. If retained earnings qualified, most of the banks would not require additional capital injection. This can be a potential area for contention between the banks and the CBN. The CBN has given the banks a 24 month timeline from April 1, 2024 to March 31, 2026 to meet the minimum capital requirements. Now, what are the implications? Thank you. For banks, A. Increased liquidity in the banking sector could lower lending rates in the medium to long term. B. Stronger ability to absorb loan losses and withstand economic shocks. C. A larger capital base will enable banks to underwrite bigger levels of credit in the economy and ultimately generate higher income. The new single obligor limit based on the new capital will enable banks to finance larger ticket transactions. D. Potential increase in the cost of capital due to the higher cost of equity capital relative to debt. E. The banks must work harder to ensure that the capital raised is deployed in profitable opportunities to create value for investors. F. Economy of scale. The tier 1 banks control over 70% of total assets and revenue in the sector. This implies that scale has a major role to play in this space. The recapitalization will reposition the banks to be more efficient, resulting in increased capacity. Equity investors. A. The illusion of existing shareholders. Additional equity capital raise will increase the outstanding shares of the banks, which implies that ratios like earnings per share and dividend per share will be reduced in short term but increase in medium to long term if the new capital is efficiently used to generate income. Hence, we may see a sell-off in some of the banks on the stock market after the earnings season. B. Opportunity to purchase stock at a discount. A rights issue is an invitation to existing shareholders to purchase additional new shares in the company at a discount to the current market price. Hence, existing shareholders will have the opportunity to 
buy bank shares at a reduced price relative to the market price. C. Increased activities in the stock market. We expect to see a flurry of offers starting this year. While the timing may be tough due to the higher interest rates in the fixed income market, the banks will have to offer attractive pricing to garner investors' interests. Implication for the economy. A. A stronger financial system will provide great support for the Nigerian economy as it works towards evolving into a $1 trillion economy in 2030. B. Attract foreign investments. Given the estimated required additional capital for banks, 3.3 trillion naira, the banks will have to attract foreign portfolio and direct investors to invest in the capital raise. This will increase FX liquidity in the economy and ultimately support Naira stability. C. Increase in business activities. To deliver value to shareholders, the banks will need to expand their business activities, especially lending, in the medium to long term. We hope this will impact the SME space, which has enjoyed minimal support from the commercial banks. D. Initial loss of jobs due to mergers and acquisitions or downgrade of license, e.g. from national to regional, will mean reduced number of branches. E. Increased business for capital market players. Equity capital raises involve several stakeholders in the capital market, including investment bankers, regulators, solicitors, and so on. Hence, we expect improved earnings from fees from the capital raise. We will recommend using technology to drive the capital raise process to avoid the bottlenecks the capital market experienced in 2005, such as delayed allotment, loss of shares, and dividends. This will increase investors' participation, boost confidence, and contribute significantly to the success of the offer. Thank you for listening. Please join us same time next week for another interesting and insightful session. For questions, comments, and feedback, kindly forward to ebo.iodej at gmail.com or send an SMS to 0708246374. Stay blessed.